So good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, guys, based on the time zones you all are coming from. So guys, before we start with the session, can you all please give me a quick confirmation if you all can see my screen and hear me loud and clear as well? You can all use the questions tab to give me a quick information, guys, if you all can see my screen and hear me loud and clear as well. Perfect. Thank you so much for the confirmation, everyone. Sophia, Uncle, Ajay. Karthik, Abdullah, Sumit. Okay, perfect. All right, so now, so again, those who have joined for the first time, my name is Neeraj Kheria from Adirika. And this is the second session that we have, that we are focusing on. And those who are joining, uh, joining for the first time, let me give you a small introduction about myself. So I have been active in this IT industry for almost 10 years now where I have held multiple companies in different industry verticals, including insurance, banking, retail, aviation-based aviation, location based services, and satellite imagery across multiple markets of the globe, including US, India, Canada, Singapore, Australia, and other Southeast Asian markets so far. Where in the, in the training front, I have been working extensively as a corporate trainer, having trained multiple corporates out there in my training experience of five years. So, Today we have, no, today is a second session that we are out of the entire journey that we have started yesterday. So yesterday we had the entire overview of what exactly DevOps is, what are different phases involved in DevOps and how we can get started on using DevOps strategies, right? So today we'll be focusing on, so today we'll be continuing from the same point where we have wrapped up. Now, those who have joined for the first time here, guys, so to here we have our own meetup community. Here we have our own meetup, meetup community here as a part of, as a part of entire gathering. So let me share this link with everyone, guys. So here we have our own meetup community where we organize multiple webinars on every month right so we have 100 plus webinars going on in every month be ranging on multiple topics including cloud computing devops development technologies and different models out here right so let me share this link with everyone here you go so these all now so we can all go ahead and join our meetup community guys the main advantage the main benefit of the main usp of this entire meetup is it's completely free of course so we don't have to pay anything for the webinars that we conduct on a monthly basis all right so they have 100 plus webinars so we can pick up our entire topic in which we are interested in and then we can get started on learning it right so that's the main advantage for the meetup that we can have so and again currently we have a pool of more than almost 12,000 members who are those who have already joined and here as you can see here we have here we can find the entire schedule here we can find the entire schedule for all the webinars that we conduct on a daily basis right and if we are a member for the beta then we can be notified when about entire schedule that we can follow and get and keep joining on a regular basis all right so now let's resume from the same point where we have wrapped up yesterday so yesterday we had discussed on multiple on the complete development scenario using done using devops we had understand what are the different models available for for the development including multiple strategies for devops and then we had discussed on the most popular tools available in each and every segment of devops right so now let's assume from the same point. So we had seen what exactly the continuous integrate continuous development is using multiple popular tools out there. We had discussed the concept of VCS as a part of version control system. We had discussed what are different types of VCS where we had discussed there's a centralized VCS 
and there's a distributed version control system out here right and then we had discussed the concept of the continuous building tool that where we had discussed tools that we had mavens we have gradle we have apache and and then after continuous building then we had discussed on the continuous testing where we have seen the tools for selenium and junit now at the core of the entire when the core at uh, the core of the entire devops strategy here we had seen there was a tool called as jenkins where jenkins is basically used for automation of each and every task here so, so basically jenkins we had discussed is used for building the pipeline which we can use to automate each and every task as a part of devops right and then we had seen there are multiple containerization tools available like we have docker right and then we had discussed on configuration management tools main name uh, mainly puppet chef right and then we had seen then when we have seen the continuous monitoring tool using the uh, using tools that we had not used we have splunk where we can use these tools to maintain a to keep a to keep a check on the health status for each and every phases available as a part of devops right and and at last we had seen the concept we have seen a rough idea a rough concept of get how we can get started on maintaining and seeing the changes being recorded as a part of version control system using get that's what we had discussed all right so now let's resume forward from the same point here guys let's zoom this in all right now here we have now we had discussed this part of in the beginning itself so here we can you know you can all go ahead and be a part of entire master class community where we can where we can in more than 150 plus webinars on each and every month here right where we can part of this entire community to get started okay i have a query from someone Okay, so I suppose so it says that webinar is being recorded. How do we access the previous webinars and how and also any future ones if we miss said and attending it live? So we can find those recordings again in our YouTube channel here, Shweta. So in case if we even if we miss out on any, we can go ahead and browse through our channel so that we can revisit it. We can do that. All right. All right. So now let's get started. Now, so the main agenda for today's session is to discuss. a bit deeper as compared to yesterday session on each and every tool that we have that we had an overview for right so yes so today we'll be focusing on understanding git first of all here we have the 10 most popular tools available in devops so first of all we'll be starting with git right so in so now git as we had discussed git is one of the most popular open source version control tool now when we had discussed about version control tool it simply means maintaining multiple versions of the same of the same code right suppose if we are working on any project and there are many changes that we are doing step by step right so for each and every change done on the file a separate version will be saved so that if we want to roll back to the previous change then we can do that easily using a part of version control tool that we had discussed yesterday right and then we had discussed that git is a part of decentralized or we can say distributed source code management tool or so distributed version control system why distributed because we had discussed this part in version control so in centralized we had discussed in centralized version control system here we have first of all first of all here we have our workstation suppose if you have multiple workstations contributing in the same repository right so all those all those different workstations they contribute they are connected directly to the remote repository right so whatever change they do they commit those those changes directly into a central and remote server right whereas in distributed we don't commit the code directly all the workstations they do not commit the code directly to the remote server first of all we can commit the code to a local repository and then we can and then we can commit it and then we can commit it back to the central repository so as a part of entire entire development process as a part of distributed version control system out here right it is highly scalable that means depending upon the requirement we can add, we can add more number of servers we can add more number of servers we can add more number of workstations again depending upon the
Buffer, thank you for confirmation, Gary. Okay, just let me have a quick check for the YouTube, for those who have joined using YouTube, just a moment, guys. Let me have a quick check with the, with the team for the audio, those who have joined via YouTube. All right, for those who have joined via YouTube, guys, so the team is checking for the audio part. Perfect. Thank you for the confirmation. Shelby, Mohammed, Deepika, Samit. All right. Now, and those companies are companies who are actually using Git. Now, we, we know they're the companies that we have Microsoft, Amazon, LinkedIn, Accenture, Facebook, Yahoo. There's not, not a single company in the entire globe who is not using Git, who is not using Git as we speak, right? Because Git is the most popular language, most, most popular version control system out there because Git is easier to use. Git is much, is much scalable as compared to, and to any other version control. Git is also a part of distributed so that each and every team they can work independently and easily on the version control system using Git. And that's why Git is the most popular tool, right? And then we had seen now, yet this part we had seen yesterday how exactly the entire system works for Git. First of all, we have a working directory or what we call as a workstation, right? And then, first of all, if we want to start tracking changes to any of the files that we add as a part of working directory, then what we do. We simply add those files into the staging area, right? We had discussed the concept of staging area. That means those, whenever we have, suppose even, even if we have hundreds of files in the working directory, still if we are focusing on suppose two, three files at a time, not more than that, then we can add those files in the staging area so that we can start tracking changes for it, right? And once we are done, then we can, and then once we are done making the changes, then we can move them to the local repository. We can do that easily. Right, and that exactly and that exactly is called as the get commit, right? And once we are done making changes, once we are done pushing the files to local, then we can push those files to remote repository. We, then we can push those files to remote repository here, right? As a part of push. And again, if you want to pull something, that means we want to pull some changes. If suppose if multiple developers are they are they are contributing in the remote repository, then we can pull the code as well back to us, back to local repository. And then we can start working on, then we can use those as a reference as well, right? Or we can edit those files as well as a part of Git, right? Now, the entire setup here will be focusing in detail with the complete hands on once we move in, once we start our full focus session on Git as a part of our third class, as a part of our 10th class journey inside uh, in different start in different tools on DevOps, right? So this part will be, so this part will be focusing on once we start a full fledged section on Git. All right. Next step, we had we had uh, we had seen the tool for Jenkins. So Jenkins is the most popular continuous integration tool available. Where Jenkins is, why Jenkins is popular? Because of one main reason. Because Jenkins has the 
plugin support for almost more than 100 plug 100 plus tools out there suppose if a team is working on some specific tools right which may not be that much popular in the market then all of those tools all of those tools are available are available inside jenkins right so suppose if we have work if we have a different repository in which we are submitting the code then we then that particular repository can also be integrated using jenkins right and that's why it has more than 2000 plugins that we had discussed it has support for more than 2000 plugins not 100 not 250 it's almost more than 2000 plugins are supported by jenkins as a part of continuous integration right and again since it is built in java that's why it is much easier to 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 make it portable right to all the platforms that we can think of right so jenkins is supported by multiple platforms it is much easier to do to create a project and deploy those in jenkins as we can think of right and the companies now these are the popular companies those who are using jenkins starting with with the pentao then we have openstack angular gap Gemini, luxsoft linkedin these all are using jenkins almost every industry out there they are using jenkins as a part of of a main continuous integration tool out there right and Jenkins, we have discussed them. First of all, if we have to, to discuss, to study the entire structure for Jenkins, then Jenkins start with the continuous repository itself, right? Suppose if here we are working on the entire structure for Git. Now, multiple developers, they can start contributing their files. Suppose we have three developers out here, right? And suppose each and every developer, they can start contributing their code to a central repository, as we can, as we can see here, right, that we had discussed yesterday. And now once the code has now as soon as any particular developer they share the code to the central repository right as soon as any developer they share code they share the code to a central repository then jenkins server will automatically fetch that code automatically will pull that change being submitted and then based on that pull it will simply initiate a build out of it right it will simply initiate a build out of it now when we say build it will simply create a build out of it means it will simply compile first of all compile the code which has been pulled it will review the code if in case of any kind of errors or any kind of 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 errors being detected in that file here then multiple unit testing will be performed uh, followed by integration testing and then it will be packaged using using the var or jar packages right as a part of continuous integration here all right and that's why we have, again once the entire build has been created then we can go ahead and deploy this as a part of user acceptance test or we can deploy this on production staging or de or development environments exactly as per the requirement we can we can do that right that's the entire setup for jenkins that we can see and that we have discussed as well right then it comes down to selenium so selenium is the open again it's an open source tool that's the main advantage of selenium and basically selenium is used to automate the entire testing for the especially for the web applications so if we want to test web applications then selenium is the most popular tool for doing that right and selenium supports multiple platforms including java python c php ruby perl javascript so all the websites, all the applications built on these different, on these different platforms, they all are supported by, they all are supported by Selenium. They all are supported by Selenium here. They all are supported by Selenium. Just a moment. And here we have, and obviously it also supports multiple operating system as well as Windows, Mac, Linux, iOS, and Android. That's why it is highly compatible to almost all development environments. It supports all the languages in which the applications are developed. And that's why it is a favorite testing tool, a continuous testing tool by different developers out here as a part of continuous testing, right? So in Selenium, what we can do, we can simply create multiple testing scripts and then we can use those testing script to, to test out any of the component if they are currently visible or not if they are currently functional or not then we can use the test selenium scripts to test that part out right and there are multiple companies that are using selenium there's almost like we can say not a single company out there is is available who is not using selenium as a part of continuous testing tool out there right so 
companies like Google, Salesforce, IBM, JP Morgan, Cognizant, Fidelity, these all are using Selenium as a part of continuous testing, as a part of continuous testing here, right? And Selenium, as we discussed, is a complete of different softwares out here, right? And it can be and it can be used to perform both functional and regression and regression testing, right? Now, when we talk about functional testing, we focus on different functions. That means, okay, how how perfectly of a particular function is is behaving. Suppose, let's say we want to test out the functionality of any particular of any particular button of any particular button out here, right? Then we can perform. Then we can then we can carry out the functional testing for the same for the testing for the same itself, right? And again, if we focus on regression again, suppose if we want to focus on the changes done, suppose if let's say we, if we, our main focus is again okay, we want to perform testing on any changes being done here, right? Again, then we can focus on regression testing as that we can achieve using Selenium, using Selenium here, right? And that's how we had discussed it supports multiple platforms, operating systems, and browsers as well as a part of continuous testing, right? So are we all clear on the tool for Selenium? Please give me a quick confirmation, everyone. Are we all clear on the concept of Selenium? And obviously, we will explore this tool as well in our subsequent sessions. But at this point, are we all clear on the concept of Selenium? Please give me a quick confirmation, everyone. Perfect. Thank you for the confirmation. Tepika, Mohammed, Ganjan, Gajanam, Ikram, Pratima. Perfect. Thank you for the confirmation, everyone. Kiri, webinar with this tran. Okay, Shilpi, so uh, didn't understand about regression testing. Okay, Shilpi, when we talk about regression testing, we are basically uh, taking care of testing. Suppose any code has been altered with or any code has changed, right? Suppose let's say when we are working on testing for multiple UI elements, right? We don't want any particular, right? So again, we don't want to focus on a simple, a specific change here. Suppose we want to focus if something has changed or not, right? Then we then we focus on regression testing, right? Absolutely, Deepika. Thank you for sharing that. And we will focus. We'll will will elaborate this part once we start our module on Selenium in our subsequent sessions. Then we'll also see this part in live action and then it will be completely clear for you at that point of time. All right. But the basic idea is clear, Shilpi. Please give me a quick confirmation. Perfect. Thank you for confirming. So now let's. Okay, webinar is just on. So when Git commands will come into picture, we had seen the OU for Git commands earlier, right? Uh, webinar is just on. And we have a focus session on Git tomorrow. All right. No problem, Shilpi. Thank you for confirmation. 
we'll be focusing on the actual git and we'll see what are the what how we can get started on git and how we can perform multiple actions on top of the same version control system out here all right is it clear now webinar is run please give me a quick confirmation Perfect. Thank you for confirming. So now let's proceed further. Now after Selenium, we have Docker. So Docker, as we had discussed, Docker is the most popular containerization tool available where it is basically focused on creating containers so that the differences between the developers and operations team can be can be bridged. Right. So basically we have in Docker is a main is the most popular tool for creating and deployment of containers right now when we talk about containers we had discussed the container houses we can say container is simply the package for the which contains the entire application plus all these dependencies on top of it right so we had discussed the, the idea of container in yesterday's session right so let's go ahead and elaborate the same example just a moment Now we have seen the concept of containers here. Just let's elaborate. Let's revisit this part just to have a, a quick clarity on top of it. Now we discussed, I suppose there's a coder out here, right? So now coder, now any coder, they want to share code with the operations team, with the operations team here, right? Now what the coder here, what they can do, they can now, they have a code built in Java, but they have now in coder, in, in coder system, they are working on Java 1.8, right? in java 1.8 itself right whereas the operations team they have 1.6 right so now the coder team now the coding team again they share the same java code with the operations but again since they have a different version out here the entire code will not function properly into their own system right that will create a compatibility issue and just to make sure that these kind of things does not happen what the coders can they can do they can instead of sharing just the code they can share the entire container they can share the entire container which will not only package the application, that means the entire coding files, but it will also package all the libraries and bins for, for, make, for making sure that the entire execution is done properly as it should, right? So all the dependencies will be also packaged inside the entire container itself, right? So that once we deploy, once we deploy this, again, the same operations team can simply, now instead of worrying about the versions, what, what they can do, they, what they can do they can simply focus on they can simply focus on running the container so they have the container which has been already created and built using the uh, tool here and they can simply focus on deployment of this container right so they don't have to worry about the operations team here they don't have to worry about the actual, the actual deployment and then they can simply actual configuration part and they can simply run the container inside the docker ecosystem out here that's the main concept of, of containers right and that's why Docker is the most popular containerization tool available for solving this issue, for solving this issue out here. All right. So it's a concept of containers clear for everyone. Please give me a quick confirmation, guys. Please give me a quick confirmation, everyone. Okay, uh, okay. Uh, so that's the main concept of why we need to have containers and what kind of problem containers solve, especially in the development scenario. Okay, Hamim, so it would be nice if we use some example projects to do for us so that we can explore the tools ourselves and add to our portfolio. For example, in tomorrow's good session, maybe you can post some links 
show me when we are focusing on one tool in a specific session we'll be focusing on that tool itself and uh, so that we can have a complete clarity on how to use that principle and how to use the same principle to execute into our to execute our own projects right perfect thank you so much for the confirmation everyone Deepika, Sumit, Fatima, Shulpi, Rajin, Mohammed. Okay, we have now just done. So, can we use it for document repository itself? Now, we don't use it for document repository here. We have now just done. So, we, just, we mostly use it for now. We also, we just like we have Git, right? Same way we have GitHub, the same way we have Docker Hub as well, right? So, if multiple teams are working, then they can all contribute, they can all submit their code, they can all submit the code in the same Docker repository, Docker Hub, and then we can, and that those images can be shared easily among other developers out there. That that can be done easily using the Docker app. That will be that we will focus once we start our focus module on Docker. All right, and that's the main advantage of using Docker here. We again, it simply provides the portability. Here we now here we can also have a good security to to deliver to deliver applications, right? Because again, the entire application is packaged, not in open, but again inside a container itself, right? And again, containers, as you know, is much lightweight as compared to VMs because VMs, they, they house the entire operating system as well. Suppose if you want to share VM with someone, then that is what uh, around 2 to two, two, 3 GB itself, right? Whereas if you want to share a container, then they can be as, as short as 35 to 40 MBs, right? So that's a huge difference in the size as well that we can share the Docker containers in, right? And companies who are using, who are actually using Docker, include Uber, New Relic, PayPal, eBay, New York Times, Oxford University. University. So there are multiple companies. Almost there are multiple companies also are using Docker as a part of main containerization tool available out there, right? And that is, and that's exactly what we use Docker for, and that's exactly what we will be focusing once we start a journey on the focus model on Docker. All right. And then here we have multiple now we had discussed this part here why docker is lightweight because docker now these are different containers so the containers contains the app plus all the libraries attached to it or that means all the dependencies that is required for running that particular container itself right and then now docker engine and, and host again these are available in the system itself so here what we can do here we can create multiple containers here we can create multiple containers and then we can share it across with a team right and they can simply use their own docker engine to simply execute these containers so that's why each and every container they do not house the individual operating system that's the main advantage docker has right so here we have the project code and then here we now using the project code here we create a docker image and then we place that image inside a docker container itself right and then we can upload this Docker Hub to the Docker Hub where it can be deployed to multiple staging and production servers. Exactly as per our requirement, we can do that. All right, that's the main advantage of using Docker. Now after Docker, here we have a tool named as Puppet. So Puppet is, is, a, is one of the most popular configuration management tools available out there. And again, it is, made, it is mostly used for deployment, for deployment, configuration, and management of servers, right? For example, suppose here we have one particular server that needs to be configured. Here we have one server that needs to be configured. Then now we, we need to have a specific version of Apache installed here. We need to have a specific version or different modules that needs to be executed or that needs to be present. We need to have a specific set of the computation that needs to be configured for that server here, right? So all of these different configurations we can do for the servers manually. We can open the server configuration and we can perform all the configuration pointers manually. I mean, that means one by one ourselves, or we suppose now this is good. This is good for if we have one or two or suppose if we have one to ten servers then we can do the manual configuration on our own we can do that that is feasible but if we have thousands of servers to deploy and that too in in shortest time possible right if we have thousands of servers to deploy in the shortest time possible then doing the, all of these configuration manually will not be feasible right so what we can do in, in those scenarios we can simply use a configuration management tool so now using configuration management tool we can simply work on 
designing a complete template. A, a, suppose let's just say we have a, a template structure, right? So here we can design the entire template, which will contain the information, what needs to be configured, what should be the configuration of each and every server. And then we can simply use the configuration management tool to replicate the configuration for each and every number of servers that we want to apply here, right? As a part of configuration management tool, right? And that's how here we have Chef, we have Puppet. So these are the most popular configuration management tool that depend now which tool we have to use here that depends upon a requirement which we will be exploring step by step as we continue ahead into our focus in, into our focus modules for these tools in our subsequent sessions all right and that's how we use configuration management tool out here all right so now let's erase this up And then we be and then here we'll be focusing on something as chef. So, so here, first of all, let's discuss on Puppet itself. A quick overview for Puppet. So Puppet here basically works on the slave and master layout. So Puppet has a configuration of slave and master layout, right? Where we can now here we can work on the master. Now, first of all. Master can simply now here we can we have we have the configuration of of puppet of puppet slave and puppet master here, right? So first of all, the slave will send the fact to about about the node. Now when we talk about node here, right? Here we have something as slave and master, where a single master can have multiple nodes connected to it, right? So as we can say, master will be the central system, a central system itself. Where suppose if we want to configure multiple things for all different system out here, right? Then they can be considered as slaves, right? They can be considered as slaves here. All right. And now here we have first of all the slave will send the the complete information about itself. That means about its IP address, about its entire information, right? And then once the information has been received by Puppet Master, and then again Puppet will use the fast that has been shared by slave, right? To to specify what how it should be configured. And once the entire configuration has been done then the report of that configuration will be sent back to the master as a part of slave and master layout followed by puppet right and then we have chef so chef is again one of the again most popular tool available for the configuration management tool right again here we have now here is suppose multiple platforms including archer centerverse free bsd right again it is it is also a part of open source tool right where the companies using Chef are Firefox, Expedia, Facebook, Walt Disney, HP, Rocket Space, right? And then these all tools are available as a part of Chef, right? And Chef is again a centralized tool for all the configuration of the server here, right? Again, Chef itself runs on the node as compared to Puppet, right? So Puppet works on the slave master architecture, whereas Chef, is, Chef does not work on that kind of architecture, right? So again, all the systems are, are managed by all the systems managed by Chef itself. They, those are called as nodes, right? Those are called as nodes, right? And Chef uses the API. Or Chef uses and Chef and Knife, right? They all uses the API clients to talk to the Chef server, right? And again, what exactly Knife is and how it is and how is it is a part of the entire component for Chef that we'll be focusing in our focus model on Chef as a part of our subsequent sessions. Right, and last when as as the last tool available for configuration management, here we have Ansible. So Ansible is again an open source configuration management tool where it it mainly focuses on push. Right. So as we discuss, if we talk about Puppet, so Puppet first of all works on the pull configuration here, whereas in Chef we will mostly focus on the on the push configurations. Right. Again, it has a master slave architecture, same as Puppet. Again, it is again. Here we don't have to worry about multi creating multiple agents, right? I suppose he said, and here we use simply created syntaxes using the YAML language, 
right? And the companies who are using your companies are using Ansible. These include Capital One, YSAT, and then we have NASA as well as a part of the most popular companies using the concept of Ansible. All right. So in Ansible here, we focus on the entire architecture for creating the databases for users. Then here we define the entire Ansible playbook where we can use this playbook to configure. Now, just like we have templates in Puppet, right? Same way here we have playbook. So playbook is used to configure all the, is to provide the, all the configuration for the entire system, right? As a part of Ansible configuration management tool. And Splunk, Splunk is, as we know, is one of the most popular tools for the continuous monitoring where Splunk is based to is mostly used for storing searching and analyzing information that is all machine generated this is all generated by machines right and basically it is used for creating the knowledge objects right again it simply monitors all the business matrices that is available out there as a part of Splunk right and again the companies who are using Splunk include Cisco Facebook IBM Bosch Motorola Domino's these all are using the concept of Splunk Right, and Splunk works first of all on the now. First of all, we need to have data input being shared to Splunk. To Splunk. Then the passing happens, then the indexing happens, and then the and then at the end, the searching happens as a part of Splunk tool out here. Right. So when we talk about in simple in simple structure here, we have here we have a forwarder, then we have indexer, and then we have the search head as a part of the entire tools shared by uh, entire tools and strategies shared, shared by Splunk. Right. So first of all, Splunk will collect the data from the remote machines, and then that data is again forwarded to the again forwarded to the real-time analysis, right? And then there now the main job of indexer is they can simply process the entire incoming messages in real time, and they can store and index the data that has been given to them on the disk. That's the main job of the main job of indexer, right? And that's why passing and indexing these are part of the indexer still. And then we have search head. Where we can use this to interact with this plank using a search head and again these uh, actually this is a front end for the entire plan which can be used to perform searching analyzing and all the visualization can be done easily using the splunk platform right and then we have elk so elk is simply elastic log, log stash and kibana right elastic log stash and kibana as a part of elk so ELK is simply a powerful connection of three to open source tools here, open source tools like we have Elasticsearch, Logstash, and then we have Kibana, right? Logstash is, as we can say, a data collection a data collection pipeline tool, whereas Elasticsearch is a NoSQL works on low SQL database because we here we know, here we don't get the idea for any schemas. And then Kibana is a data visualization tool. Suppose once we have captured the data, then how we can visualize this same way like we have a real-time real -time analyst tool available in AWS by the name of Kinesis, by the name of Kinesis, right? Same way here we have tools like we have, we have companies like we have, those who are using ELK include Netflix, we have OpenStack, we have Accenture, and then we have LinkedIn as a company, those who are using the, those who are using the ELK platform out here. All right. And at last, we'll be focusing on Nagio. So Nagio will is basically used for monitoring purposes, where we can where it can be used to monitor and troubleshoot any server performance issues. Right? Suppose if one server is being overloaded, if the if, if one server is continuously failing or it has been you know, it has been in in use at its hundred percent capacity, right? So these all things can be reported easily by using the concept of Nagios by using the tool as Nagios here, right? And basically, it, it simply allows us to plan the infrastructure upgrades before any system goes outdated. Suppose a version of, of any system needs to be updated, then we can do that easily using Nagios, right? It can be used for automatically fixing the problems when they, as soon as they are detected, as soon as they are detected here. Just a moment.
because here we need to perform the analysis on each and every phase out here that means what is happening with with the continuous development what is happening with the building tools what is happening with the jenkins right so these all things has to be has to be well thought of and well monitored as a part of Nagios tools out here right so here it can be used automatically to fix all the problems when they are detected as soon as they are detected this can be used to perform the analysis right and this can be reported in real time scenario when we have the notification systems put in place here all right and the companies who are using Nagios again almost every company is using Nagios but again here we can refer this to the Comcast, Yahoo, Sony, MTV, Toshiba, Siemens these all are using Nagios as one of the most popular tool available for the continuous monitoring for continuous monitoring out here for continuous monitoring out here And the entire structure for Nagios we had discussed. We had discussed the entire structure for Nagios. Right? So Nagios again has a complete web dashboard, and that's why Nagios is most popular because again, in other tools, again, we are we there we get a simple log file as a dashboard here as a part of application, right? Whereas in Nagios, we simply get the entire in interface as a web interface that we can use to get started, right? So again, as you know, we can connect this to multiple notification system out here where we can send the notifications as a part of complete tools here, right? Where we can use this, where we can use this to connect this to the entire notification system. And then we can, and then if we have focus team, if we have focus team on on keeping a check for the entire system focus team for the for keeping a check on the health monitoring system then we can send them we can notify them using this entire system here all right so now i think we are done with the entire overview for all the tools out here guys so now it's a, a simple question time so any questions that you have that you have guys so now it's a good time to just bombard as many questions as you want in the questions tab Okay, Nithya, so I am pursuing masters in electrical and want to start business in this field here and I need your help for it. Can you help me? If you want the, uh, if you want the perfect knowledge for getting started here today, whether we are looking for the for the entire knowledge, either for jobs or either for starting our own business, we can do I can, we can help you out, right? In making sure that you all that you all are equipped with the latest with the knowledge for each for how this entire things work and how we can leverage this for our own career right will be helping definitely will be helping you out on that part all right guys so any questions you want to ask we again we can go ahead and ask those questions so that once we have a good visibility on your questions we can i can make sure to answer it one by one Okay, servant of God, with no IT knowledge, can I learn DevOps? Definitely, we you can. Anyone having no IT knowledge here, obviously, having a good IT knowledge, it's always recommended because again, we'll be having a fair understanding of how the entire development environment works, right? But again, if we are also learning the entire IT structure, we also learning the entire IT structure parallelly, then we can then we can then it will be much easier for us to understand DevOps in that case. All right. Yes, Shilpi, we'll be having multiple demo classes when we are focusing on each and every tool individually, right? So once we once we come back tomorrow for our session on Git, 
we'll be having a complete use case we will focus on one actual use case for the project and then we'll be focusing on the advanced structures for get account right when you're focusing on one module in each and every class here then we'll be focusing on actual hands-on the same way that we had discussed the remember last time we had a we had a small overview of, of how we can get started using get right the same thing will that uh, again same and we, can, we will be taking the same part much further when we have took when we are focusing on individual tools in our subsequent classes as a clear shall be please give me a quick confirmation Okay, I mean, so what other tools can we use for monitoring other than Argus? We have Splunk as the most popular tool also available out there. Amit? No problem, Shilpi. And we'll make sure that your first time, your first time experience learning DevOps is really great. Rest assured for that. So you can hop on for the journey that will be having for the next nine days straight. We will be focusing on each and every module in detail. Uh, yes, on Docker and Kubernetes are also part of the entire module here. Thank you for the appreciation webinar registration. See how is the demand for DevOps role? So DevOps is the most is, is one of the most we can say hottest selling skill set, especially in 2019, because every team, every big company, every corporate out there, they they are all shifting to the DevOps development cell. Right, and that's why we need DevOps. That's why we need DevOps for that. That's why, in, as we know, each and every company out here, they all are moving to the cloud computing platform, and they all are performing DevOps on top of it. Uh, yes, CG. So you can enroll into the entire DevOps master course. Again, let me share the link for it as well. Just a moment. So here we can explore this entire certification training that we have to offer. So we can go ahead and explore this for getting started. Here you go. Okay, Naresh is DevOps an extension of Agile. Naresh DevOps is not DevOps is a part of the development cycle which actually resolves all the drawbacks faced by agile all the drawbacks faced by agile here all right all right guys so i guess it's almost time now so let's say we wrap it up for today and we'll be continuing ahead for the same time Tomorrow to con and tomorrow our main focus would be to, to understand the working of Git. How we can get started on using Git, and when we'll be focusing on a small hands-on on a live pro on a is on a project so that we can incorporate the same thing at our own end as well. All right. So thank you so much for joining, guys. And again, once we end the webinar here, you all will be getting a small NPS feedback form. So please do rate us excellent in the feedback form. And those who are joining via YouTube. So kindly just show your love by, by, by hitting the like button and again, share the entire video as much as you all can, right? So thank you so much for joining guys and see you all tomorrow at the same time to start our journey on DevOps. Thank you so much. Take care. Bye-bye.
Ahoj.